Vice President Harris, Majority Leader Schumer, Mitch McConnell. Mitch, I don't want to hurt your reputation, but we really are friends. <laughs> and, uh, and that is not a, an epiphany we're having here at the moment. We've always, you've always done exactly what you've said. You're a man of wor- your word and you're a man of honor. Thank you for being my friend. The moment President Biden was talking about was the National Prayer Breakfast, February 3rd, 2022. And President Biden was right about his and Mitch McConnell's friendship. That wasn't a sudden epiphany. Friendly words and personal praise between Joe Biden and Republican Senate Leader McConnell go back years, as we'll hear in this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. January 15, 2009, Senator Joe Biden is just days away from becoming vice president, and the Senate offers tribute to their departing colleague. Up first for the Republicans, Minority Leader Mitch McConnell. Now, Mr. President, turning uh, to the issue of the moment, which is the uh, celebration of the career of our good friend from Delaware and wishing him well in the future. I remember being sworn in in January of, 18, uh, of 1985, thinking, you know, I'd gotten to the Senate at a pretty early age. I was 42 years old. And I thought, gee, I've gotten here pretty early age. On the same day I was sworn into my first term, the senator from Delaware was being sworn into his third term. I mean, he was barely old enough to vote uh, when he got here. And uh, we, are, we were born in the uh, same year, but you got a 12-year head start on me, I, I would say, Mr. President, to my friend from Delaware, and has had an extraordinarily distinguished career. Uh, when we think about Senator Biden, certainly we think about his marvelous uh, personality, his demeanor, his friendliness. Uh, he can have a good rip-roaring uh, debate without uh, being uh, disagreeable, as we all say. Uh, he's been a, a pleasure uh, to work with, and I say that as somebody who has rarely uh, voted on the, uh, on the same side as he has. Uh, we say goodbye today to... Uh, uh, an outstanding individual who's been a really a fixture in the Senate for 36 years and a friend to everyone in the chamber. Uh, and he's now, of course, had uh, is going to enjoy an even greater achievement as he becomes the vice president of the United States. Since Senator McConnell mentioned his swearing in during those 2009 remarks, let's jump to January 6, 2015, opening day of the 114th Congress and the Senate ceremonial swearing in. Joe Biden is vice president, and Mitch McConnell is the incoming Senate majority leader. Senator McConnell raises his right hand, and the vice president administers the oath. Do you solemnly swear that you will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that you will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that you take this oath freely without any mental reservation or purpose of evasion, that you were well and faithfully discharged the duties of the office upon which you're about to enter. So hope you Congratulations, Mr. Leader. Nearly two years later, on December 7th, 2016, a second Senate farewell tribute to Joe Biden. Because he was ending his time as Vice President of the United States, Biden was also departing as President of the U.S. Senate. Senators took turns praising him, including Majority Leader Mitch McConnell, who held back sniffles, mentioned swearing in, and was as warm to Joe Biden then as he was in 2009. And what a road he has traveled. From Newcastle to the Naval Observatory, from Scranton to the Senate. His journey in this body began by the side of those who loved him. hand on the Bible, heart in a knot, swearing the same oath he now administers <clears throat> to others. It's a journey that ends now by the side of those who care about him still, those like his wife Jill, who understand the full life he's lived. Here's a man who's known great joy, who's been read his last rites, and who's never lost himself along the way. Champ, his father used to say, the measure of a man is not how often he is knocked down, but how quickly he gets up. That's Joe Biden right there. 
unbowed, <clears throat> unbroken, and unable to stop talking. <laughs> a few days later, in a C-SPAN interview, Joe Biden was asked about that Senate tribute. I hope students of the Senate watched it, not about me, but the people with whom I've had pitched battles, pitched battles, John McCain. I mean, really intense battles. Mitch McConnell, I could go down the list. And they're standing up and they're saying, look, you know, we like each other. We were able to get back in the ring again and work things out. Four years later, on December 15th, 2020, on the Senate floor, Senator McConnell congratulated a new president, his former colleague. Yesterday, electors met in all 50 states. So as of this morning, our country has officially a president-elect and a vice president-elect. Many millions of us had hoped the presidential election would yield a different result. But our system of government has processes to determine who will be sworn in on January the 20th. The Electoral College has spoken. So today I want to congratulate President-elect Joe Biden. The President-elect is no stranger to the Senate. He's devoted himself to public service for many years. A historical note, Senator McConnell had a different relationship with Joe Biden's boss as vice president, Barack Obama. In his 2016 book, The Long Game, a Memoir, Senator McConnell wrote a chapter titled Professor Obama. On C-SPAN's Book TV on June 4, 2016, he explained why he chose to call him professor and invoked Joe Biden. The president is a very smart guy. Um, I think he knows a lot about a lot of things. I think he would do a better job of dealing with others if he would spend less time trying to acquaint whoever he's talking to at the moment with his brilliance and more time listening. Just to draw a contrast between the president and the vice president. I've been in a number of uh, major deals with the vice president that were important and worth doing for the country. He doesn't spend any time trying to convince me of things he knows I don't believe, and I don't spend any time trying to convince him of things that he doesn't believe. In other words, we don't waste any time on all of that. We get down to trying to figure out what we can do together because he knows how far I can go and I know how far he can go. Which leads to this episode's bonus clip. April 27, 2013, the White House Correspondents' Dinner. President Obama is up there telling jokes. And when he comes to a riff about Senator McConnell, he goes in a different direction than what Joe Biden might have done. Recently, I had dinner. It's been well publicized. I had, I had dinner with a number of the uh, Republican senators. Uh, and, and I'll admit it, it wasn't easy. Uh, I proposed a toast. It died in committee. <laughs> <laughs> of course, even after I've done all this, some folks still don't, don't think I spend enough time with Congress. Why don't you get a drink with Mitch McConnell, they ask. Really? <laughs> Why don't you get a drink with Mitch McConnell? <laughs> I'm sorry. I get frustrated sometimes. You probably won't hear a similar punchline from President Biden at the next White House Correspondents' Dinner this April. That's it for this episode of C-SPAN's The Weekly. A reminder, you can do your own searches in the C-SPAN video library. Just go to cspan.org and use the search bar on top. Search for Joe Biden, Mitch McConnell, anyone you want. And since in this episode we've been talking about being friends, prove your friendship by sending that special someone a nice new clip from the C-SPAN video library. Thanks for listening and happy searching. Thank you.